In today's video, I'm going to be covering one of the hardest challenges ever completed in gaming history, which took over 30 hours to complete. I'm gonna go over how multiple people have tried to do this challenge, and one person even getting so close as to fail 40 hours into the challenge run, and how someone was finally able to prevail and complete this challenge. This, my friends, is the story of how one runner was able to collect everything in Breath of the Wild without taking damage a single time. When people think about hard games, they usually think about games such as Dark Souls or Cuphead, games in that genre. Zelda games in general are not one of the first games that comes to mind. People have been doing challenge runs in Zelda games for years at this point, going all the way back to the original Legend of Zelda on the NES, when people used to do no sword runs, and damages runs have been done on basically every game in the Zelda franchise at this point. So what makes this run so special? Well, when it comes to damages runs, people usually do the any% percent category. For those unaware, any% percent only has one goal, beat the game as fast as possible, with no restrictions. So in Breath of the Wild's case, at any percent speedrun, we just complete the Great Plateau, then rush to Hyrule Castle, reach Dark Beast Ganon, and after defeating him, that's it. That's the run. It's incredibly fast, just like hitting that subscribe button. Wink wink. But for 100%, it's a completely different story. For most Zelda games, 100% speedruns usually takes around 4 hours or so to complete. But for Breath of the Wild, it's on a completely different level. For a normal 100% speedrun, the player is required to obtain everything in the game. This includes all 900 Korok seeds, all 120 shrines, all locations, every single quest, full compendium, and of course, upgrading every permanent armor to level 4. Many players have put hundreds of hours into this game, and has never even gotten close to obtaining all 900 Korok seeds. Getting all of them is just such a difficult task. But the speeder for this category has taken a drastic turn in the past few years. What used to be a 30 hour long speedrun, now it takes less than 20 hours for top runners to complete. This is thanks to many new speedrun techniques, such as BILs, which allows you to launch yourself with a bomb, reaching incredible heights and distances, and you can do this basically anywhere in the game. But most of these techniques require you to take damage. So how would someone go about even attempting to complete the speedrun without taking any damage? Well, it was back to the drawing boards. The original idea of doing a 100% damageless run started all the way back when Specs and Stats, one of the top speedrunners of the game, thought it would be a fun challenge. He started looking into consistent strats and even doing a couple of attempts of the category, and this is when people started to get really creative when it came to routing this whole thing. Back in July of 2019, a new glitch was found that was dubbed the Moon Jump Glitch. If you're interested in the full details on how to perform this glitch, I will link a full tutorial and breakdown in the description of this video, but to simplify, after performing this glitch, the game constantly thinks that you're standing on the ground, allowing it to jump over and over again. This allows you to gain an infinite amount of height, and it also prevents you from taking any falling damage, since the game never considers you to be in the air in the first place, since it constantly thinks that you're just standing on the ground. This was initially implemented all the way back originally for the 100% speedrun, but it was quickly made obsolete thanks to the discovery of bomb impact launches, because despite some areas being faster with the moon jump glitch active, it's almost impossible to perform a BIL with the glitch active in the background. But since a no damage run cannot perform any of these tricks anyways, since it requires links to take damage, they could implement the moon jump glitch for the majority of the speedrun. Another thing that was thought of was to start using a target system a lot more. In other Zelda games, if target is being held, Link can basically only freely run forward. But in Breath of the Wild, if the player holds target and then starts running, you can freely run in any direction, and it's only when walking that Link is truly in his target mode. And if you've ever beaten the Divine and Beast in Breath of the Wild, you will know about the champion's abilities. And the one you receive from Daruk is Daruk's protection. This adds a shield surrounding Link, and if any of the enemies attempts to damage you, then it will instead push them back, not dealing any damage to Link. However, this armor is only available to players when holding targets. This is why you will see that they will continue to hold targets when running around, so that he doesn't accidentally get hit by a random key or choo-choo that spawned right next to him. Now equipped with all of these strats, 
there is only one major obstacle left to overcome. And this is something that I haven't brought up yet. A 100% speedrun requires you to obtain everything in the game that is a permanent change to your inventory. And an NPC by the name of Kilton, who runs a monster shop, will gift you a medallion if you have been able to beat every single overworld boss. This include all 40 Hinoxes, all 40 Taluses, and the four Moldogas in Gerudo Desert. And obviously in a damages run, you attempt to avoid encounters with enemies at all costs. So how would you safely go about defeating 84 different overworld bosses? Well, in late 2020, a consistent method was found that allows you to duplicate items anywhere in the game. This can be used to duplicate both weapons, shields, and also bows. And this was the last piece of the puzzle to make this challenge even attemptable to begin with. By duplicating the Great Eagle Bow and combining it with the Moon Gem Glitch, you can try and fight enemies in mid-air while using a bow, lowering the risk of getting hit by any bosses. You still have to watch out though, since Taluses can attack you while you're hanging out in midair. But with all of this in his arsenal, Spex decided to try the impossible. He was going to attempt to beat Breath of the Wild 100% without taking any damage. Spex's attempts were going great. He definitely had a couple of failures here and there, but he got an amazing run started. They made it all the way 40 hours in, where he had collected all 900 Korok seeds, he had gotten basically every single shrine except for the last one, and all he wanted to find was just the very last locations that he was missing on the map. He had just run up and found one of the bridge locations that he had missed, and he was scouting around the map to try and find another one, and right as he found one and he was going to mark it on the map, he accidentally closed down the menu, and unfortunately, this happened. I pressed the wrong button, that's all it takes. He got hit by a random skeleton that spawned during the night. And that was it, that was the end of the story. Specs never attempted to do a 100% speedrun again after this, because that just, how do you come back from that? How do you come back after losing a run 40 hours in? But another runner by the name of Jodan saw an opportunity here. He wanted to truly be the first one to do this, and he set off on a journey to try and do this. And on the 18th of December, 2020, this happened. At this point, most speedrunners would have given up. Imagine losing a run 30 hours into the speedrun due to taking damage by such an unfortunate mistake. But Joe, he was persistent. Joe truly wanted to be the world's first person to prove that it was not just a meme that you could beat Breath of the Wild 100% without taking any damage. So he kept pushing. And after 31 hours, 58 minutes, and 9 seconds, 
Joe had successfully obtained everything in the game, overcoming all obstacles, and successfully being able to be the first person in the world to complete the hardest speedrun challenge in Zelda's history, and most likely, one of the hardest challenges in gaming history. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I usually don't cover these sort of things in this channel, but I had a lot of fun making it, and Breath of the Wild is a game that I'm very passionate about, so please let me know if this is something that you guys want to see more of in the future. I've linked Joe's Twitch channel in the description of this video, and you should all definitely check it out. And if you want more awesome speedrunning content just like this, then be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. My name is Linka7, and thank you so much for watching today's video.